Hi friends, it's Sharon from Mad Paper Crush. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making this tri-fold ephemera holder and I'm even going to call it a little travel folder because I think it's the perfect size to take with you on trips so that you have a place to tuck in any little bits of ephemera and things that you have. So you can see here I have a little um, book plate on it if you wanted to add you know what trip you were on or something like that, the year or something like that, so that you could keep things together. There's a little pocket here where you can tuck some things. And then there's three big envelope pockets because we're gonna make these from envelopes. So you can see there was one there. Let me take this out. You can see another big envelope pocket right here. And then another big envelope pocket on this side for bigger pieces of ephemera and things like that. There's a little tuck spot right here where you can add little things in as well. And then there's um, a little sort of mini pocket here, which is perfect for little bits of ephemera that you might have. And then on the back, there's even another pocket for you to add some things into if you want to. So I think this is a fun travel ephemera folio for you to take along on trips. And we're gonna make it from three envelopes that you probably have lying around already. So let's get to it. So for our supplies, you're going to need three envelopes. And I chose envelopes that I actually got, you know, like in bills and things like that, return envelopes. But since I pay most of my bills online, I just decided to, you know, keep these for use because they're good envelopes. They, you know, have the windows if you wanted to create some things with windows. I'm not going to be doing that today, but these are good envelopes to keep. And then I also at a thrift store had gotten a whole stack of um, these envelopes, which, um, you know, I have a whole stack, so I want to start using them. So these are the three envelopes that I'm going to use. And just um, so you know, the envelopes are a little bit different size. They are the same height or almost the same height, very close to the same height. But in terms of width, I have one that is about a quarter of an inch shorter than the other two. So these two return envelopes are exactly the same size. And then this envelope is a little bit smaller. Now, I think that you could probably do this project with all three being the same size. You would just have to watch your folds to make sure nothing's being creased. But because I have this one that's a little bit shorter, it's going to be easier for me to do that. So I'm going to be using those. And then I just pulled out some digital papers that I had um, printed in the past and haven't used yet. So I just picked out something that looked like it was, you know, sort of matching. Actually, these three are from my Midnight Stroll digital kit. And this is from um, my All the Marbles end paper kit. And I thought they kind of um, looked fun together. So I'm probably going to be using, you know, a mix and match of all of these to cover everything with. And then um, for, that's it for really for the supplies. For the tools that you're gonna need, I'm definitely gonna be using glue. I'm not sure if I'm just gonna be using my glue stick or I may be using some art glitter glue as well. Definitely gonna be using some, uh, this ground espresso distress oxide because I don't want any of this white to really be showing. So I'm going to distress everything. Um, and then my cutter and um, a ruler, probably for straight edges and things like that. And that's basically all we're gonna need. So let's get started. So the first thing I wanna do before I put anything together is I wanna start distressing these envelopes. So I am going to just use my distress oxide and I'm basically going to distress all around the edges, um, anywhere there's a flap, probably in the fold of the flap. Um, I don't think a lot of the flap will be showing, but I probably still will go around the edges just to be on the safe side. And then when I flip it over, same thing, all around the edges and then in these internal um, folds here. So this is gonna be a pocket in our end book there. And so I wanna be sure like all of this is distressed here so that it's not showing a lot of that blue. You know, some of the pattern and stuff can come through, which I think is fun, but I'm gonna be distressing it down to make sure that it's more, you know, brown that matches my papers that I'm gonna be using uh, there as well. So this a little bit will be showing, not too much. So I'm not too concerned about it, but I do want to, like I said, take away a lot of the white that you might be seeing on all of here. OK, 
Okay, these are all distressed and ready to go. I love the darker ink. This is a lot darker than vintage photo, but I like the way it looks. So now I have to organize these the way that I want them. So what I'm gonna do is I want my first two folds to be um, together. So I'm using the bigger envelopes for my first two folds. And then for the outer fold, I'm using the smaller one. So when that one comes in, when this one folds in, um, the bigger ones will fold over it easily without, you know, worrying about the bend here. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. Like I said, you could do this with a, um, the same size envelope. You may just need to glue it with like an eighth of an inch, um, sort of, you know, gusset here so that it doesn't, you know, it doesn't pick up this side. And that's, probably not even true because if you pull this out an eighth of an inch it's going to make it longer so if it's the same size you may need to you might even need to just you know cut this edge off a little bit so that it doesn't get caught in the fold now it might not anyway you might be okay if you give it a try um, but I just wanted to make a note of it in case you're using you know three of the same sized envelopes so what I'm going to do is first I'm going to I'm going to use my art glitter glue uh, for this um, first attachments that I'm making. So I'm going to take my two of the same size envelopes and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the flap from one and put it in the, the flap from the other or put it in the pocket of the other. So these two are, you know, facing each flaps facing each other. That's how I'm going to put this in together. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some glue on just the flap and you can see I did, um, I did distress the flap because I didn't know if I, you know, you'd be seeing it or whatever. And I just wanted to be sure all my bases were covered here. So I'm just adding a little bit <clears throat> to this and then very carefully, because this glue sets up really fast, I want to get this into the flap and right up in line with and see it's already sticking here with the other fold so with the back fold so I'm trying to get those together and it's really just not going together so I'm going to try this again sometimes things don't work the way you you know want them to I'm gonna see if I can put this end in first and get that other one in there there we go that way that time I think I got it so now I have the folds of the flaps aligned here. And this one is glued down already, okay? And then I'm going to also glue down this flap around the outside of it. And this you could make into a pocket or something like that if you wanted to. You could just, you know, glue down three, you know, the top edges there, top and bottom, if you wanted to make a pocket, but I'm gonna cover the whole thing up. Okay, so here's our start, and then the last fold, so my tri-fold here, is going to be my smaller envelope, and I'm just putting my glue on the inside flap of this one, and all we're going to do is we're going to line up the far edge of our double flip with the flap or the fold on that one gluing the flap down so this flap now is glued there and so now you can see I can fold this over together and I have a pocket here I have a pocket here and I have a pocket here and so now we're going to start covering and um, I just kind of wanted to give you some tips that you know I use to cover envelopes that are already made so for the front you know piece let me grab my papers here. I was thinking I wanted to do this bird on the front, but you can see my paper is smaller than my envelope, which I should have known because these envelopes accept eight and a half by 11 inch papers. But, you know, it took me a minute to figure that out. So I may still use this, but I may just make like a cover plate or something after we get it, you know, completely covered. So I'm not going to use that one for the front. So I'm going to use some of these other ones for the front. <clears throat> or for all of them, and then um, we'll come back in. So when you're covering an envelope that's already here, I'm gonna grab my pencil here, 
what I like to do, since it's already distressed, and I know my edges, um, if they show, they're just going to show the distress and not the white. What I like to do is I like to mark them, giving myself like an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch of a border. I kind of like that to show because then it kind of looks, um, you know, deliberate that you're creating a border around each of the edges. So what I do is I um, take the piece that I'm going to use. I line it up on one side where I want it. And then I take my pencil and I just mark because it's, I know it's where I want it on this side. I'm going to mark it on this side where I want it to be. And then I'll do the same thing on the shorter side. So once again, I'll line it up on this side exactly, you know, the, with the border that I want there, making sure I, you know, have it all the way down. And you can see I'm not totally lined up because I've already um, given the measurement for the length here. So now I'm just doing the width and I'm just going to, once again, as long as this side is lined up where I want it, I'm going to mark this with my 1 16th or so border that I have there. And then when I cut this out, I'm going to try not to cut off my markings, which I've done in the past. So first I'm going to cut this one. And I've heard it said, I don't know how true it is, but I've heard it said that if you cut the smaller side first, then you have more paper left over. So I always try to do that. I don't necessarily um, succeed at that all the time. And now I can't find my mark. Oh, there it is. Okay, so now this piece should fit on here. I'm going to decide how I want it. I think I want more of the colors down at the bottom because if I do end up making a cover plate for this, I can put it at the top here. And so you can see how when I glue this down, I'm going to have that little border all the way around. So what I'm going to do for this one, I'm just going to flip it over and I'm going to, to mark <laughs> what it, where I'm putting it and which side is up <laughs> so that I can come back and remember. Because I want to, since I have my cutter out and everything, I'm going to cut all the pieces first, and then I'm going to cover everything. So that's how you do just a, you know, a straight rectangle side. That's how I would measure for that one. But now let's talk about how I'm going to do some of these uh, weirder cuts on the inside. So first let's do this one on this side. <clears throat> So I have to pick a piece of paper for that one. So let's say I want to use this one here. So what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark um, the width that I want. Now, I'm going to be using that same little border around everything. Um, and I'm just going to mark it because I know at the top edges, I want it to go almost all the way to that flap crease that we have up there. So that's where I'm going to mark it. Even though we're going to be cutting out some more of this, I want to at least mark it here so that I have enough to go from edge to edge. And then we'll do the same measurement on the sides like we did before. We're going to line up, line up one piece here, and then we're going to make our measurement there. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it down so I have the height of my envelope in place. And this is probably the smaller one, which I didn't do before. Okay. So now I have this nice big piece left and I have my width marker here. So I'm just going to cut that out. And you don't even really need to cut, the, cut it out here if you don't want to. Actually, let me, let me show it to you that way. So I have my my height of the envelope. So I know that this will now fit into this envelope. And I, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it right in the envelope, just like this, and try to get it in there as straight as possible so that it's, you know, um, all the way down to the bottom. And then <clears throat> I'm going to pull it back just about an eighth of an inch because if I have this all the way down to the bottom, I'm not going to have that border that we've been trying to do here so far. Let me move this out of the way. So now that this is all the way down at the bottom, I'm just going to eyeball it and pull it out just about that eighth of an inch there that I wanted to make the border. And actually this pencil line is also be being a guide for me now that I've pulled it out a little bit. But then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very lightly trace on that paper the edge of this envelope that I'm going to be covering. So this has um, like a triangular flap, so I'm just going to trace that 
there. So then when I pull it out, I can see the line where I need to cut. And when I do that, I'm actually gonna cut like a little bit on the inside of that line to give myself the border that I want. So actually I'm not gonna use these, I'm gonna use these. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of the border showing and I'm just gonna try to follow that line as best I can. Okay, and then when I place it over here now, I should have something that gives me a little bit of a border around the whole thing, which it does. So <clears throat> that is how I'm gonna cut these weird ones. <laughs> so I'm gonna do th the same thing on some of these other ones. I'm gonna try to use a different, like a different page on each one. Um, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna mark my height. We'll do one more together since these are a little bit different. They don't have the triangle, but they still kind of have a weird, a weird shape. I'm going to give myself the border. I'm going to find my pencil, not my scissors. I'm going to give myself a mark right there. And then I am going to go ahead and do the width of this one as well, because I think that worked good when I was trying to pull out my, um, my border there. So let me do it this way. I'm gonna start with the edge that I want on the cover lined up with this side. And then I'm going to just mark where my fold line is so that I know that's you know how far I'm gonna go. So let's cut this one. Let me see if I can find my cut line on this one. So this is my height there. And then my width, see if I cut off my mark. Maybe I did. Where is it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> make sure you make a, a line that you can find. Okay, so then I'm just going to cut this down. Or wait, we don't need to cut this one down, that's right. So that's my, that's my width mark, I don't need to cut that one down yet. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this inside of my envelope, just like we did the other one. And this one feels like it's glued down. <laughs> I'm gonna have to pull that apart. I think my glue must have seeped out or something. Or maybe, oh, you know what? That was my, that was the gummed flap of that envelope, which is why that was sticking down. So it must have activated somehow. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in here all the way down to the bottom. <clears throat> and I have my little mark here that is on my flap. I'm gonna pull that out just about an eighth of an inch so that I have my border on this side, okay? I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm going to copy this weird kind of edge that I have. And now you don't have to, um, which you know I may not do here either. You don't have to make this weird edge if you don't want to. You could just go down, you know, just cover this part right here. And since this is all distressed, that might work just fine. So if you wanted to cover the entire thing, you would just do the same thing we did there. You would find your line that you just drew, which my goodness, I drew it very light, didn't I? I can barely see it over there. Okay, I'm gonna have to do that again. <laughs> because of all the lines on this paper, it's hard to see where the lines are. There it is. I'm gonna have to draw a little bit darker here to make sure I can see this line. Okay. And then if you want, like I said, if you wanted to cover the whole thing, you would just do the same thing by coming in an eighth of an inch lower then each of your lines and just trace it around using that as your guide. Now, like I said, I'm not sure, because these little flaps are so tiny on the edges, I may just cut them off altogether. I'm not sure I'm gonna like them the way that they are. So let's see. So this one now should go like this, and I should have a little border right around, which I do. 
and that actually looks okay. So I could just glue that down just like that. So that's how I'm going to cover the rest of this. So I'm gonna do this side. Now that I have these three ready to go, I'm gonna do this one the same way that we just did this one. I'm gonna do just a flat rectangle on the back there and a flat rectangle on the back there. And then I'm also going to distress around these edges so that everything matches. So let me go ahead and start doing that. Okay, I have all of my flaps distressed and ready to go. So I'm just going to, um, when I, I did mark them all, so I know which one goes where, I'm gonna start with the back here. And before I you know, put any glue on, I'm just gonna make sure I have it the way that I want it in terms of right side up and upside down and all that good stuff. Actually, I think I want this one this way. And for this, I am gonna use my glue stick for this. So um, I'm going to use this little pad of paper that I have, and I'm gonna make sure I add glue all the way to the edges. And that's why I like using this one, uh, the glue stick for this because I can really cover everything, which is, you know, what I want before I glue this down. And let's see if I can remember which way I wanted to put this. Yeah, this way. Okay, and then I'm gonna make sure I have my borders in place before I put everything down. And that's how I'm just gonna glue them all together. So I'm just gonna, so this one is the right flap outside. So this is my right flap and this is the outside. <laughs> so I have that one that way. So I can figure out how I want this one and that looks good to me. And since this has glue on it now, I'm just gonna flip that over so I don't get glue on the front side of my flaps. And so when I turn this around, I try and keep it lined up to where I had it before so that I don't get glue on the front. Sometimes you get a little bit on there. And then we're gonna glue this down and I'm just gonna keep going throughout the whole thing. And that one I had a little crooked, but I like this glue stick because it gives you a little, little extra time to do something there. And then uh, for these ones that are, you know, our special cuts here, this is the middle flap here. So I'm just gonna do the same thing, make sure I have my borders in place. And then I know, you know, kind of where I want it to go. And let's flip. And we'll glue this down. <clears throat> okay. And probably could put the top 
part on first to be sure that you have it really lined up where you want it, but I'm thinking that's looking good to me. And I kind of like the little, I wasn't sure I'd like these little pieces on there, but I think I like them on there um, just because it helps, you know, cover up everything better. So I'm just going to keep gluing everything down until I have them all glued in place. All right, as I was finishing things up here, I like the way it's coming together. I decided that I'm gonna add um, layers on the inside. So I wasn't crazy about how this looked and my distress doesn't really go over it. And this little window um, is starting to peel as well. So I thought I would just take some of the leftover strips of paper and tuck them in and glue them down right on the inside there. So I'm using the matching um, paper from each of the flaps here to do that. And I'm gonna do this with my, this is sometimes hard to do because as you saw before, <laughs> if the glue starts sticking before you, you know, get it to where you want it, it can, it can um, stick down and just make it hard. So I'm going to try to do this with my glue stick because this sometimes gives me a little bit more time to get something glued down. But all I'm gonna do is, I'm use, since I'm using the leftover pieces, I know that they're already the right um, width that I need, or I'm sorry, the right height to fit inside this little, inside this pocket here. It is starting to stick down on me, but I'm going to do my best to really get it into place and that worked pretty good and then I'm going to press the whole thing down there and so now I have like a little liner inside that flap so I'm just going to do the same with the rest of these I'm going to put one in this one and then this is actually the the piece that we cut off so I'm just going to slip that right down in there um, and line it up with the flap right there as well so let me go ahead and glue that one down but it's gonna cover up some of the, the inside envelope, which, you know, you might want or you may not want. Whoopsie. Let's see if I can, now that I've got it on the front, it might be harder to get into that flap, but let's see. Let's see if we can do this here. And actually this, the triangle one might be a little bit easier just because I have more space than I do on the on the other ones. So I'm just lining this up close to the flap, not over the flap, so that I'm not, you know, um, limiting my fold there at all. And then we'll do the same thing with this one. I have some room over here. And I did distress these after I uh, picked them up and decided to do it. So these edges um, are all distressed as well. So that none of that will show. Okay, let's see if I can do this one. <clears throat> this one's probably going to be my the tough one here, of course. Actually, it wasn't it wasn't too bad. But I know if I used my glitter glue on this, it would have um, been much harder for me to get those where they they need to be because glitter glue while I love my glitter glue it grabs really fast so you have to be real quick and if you get it stuck to something before you're ready it's uh, hard to get it back up sometimes okay so now I have each of my pockets lined and I like that a whole bunch better and then we can start the next piece all right let's add some embellishments some more pockets 
and all that good stuff to really uh, make this whole thing come together. So uh, what I did was I just grabbed a, some scraps from my scrap bin. You can see I've um, cut them for other things. You know, they're just kind of scraps left over. But I thought these would be perfect little places to maybe add some pockets. So uh, for this one, we can, here, I might as well just go ahead and start doing it. So I, I like some contrast on these, so I don't want to use the same color papers um, because it'll be hard to see where the pockets are. But like for this one, I like this right here, kind of as a, a nice little you know pocket where you can add something here, but it does stick over. So what we can do is kind of the same thing that we learned before. You can put this in here, as long as you can make sure it goes in right. And depending on where you want it, you just, once again, trace the edge here of that pocket so that when we cut it off, it will match um, the line right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick while, while I have this here. I'm just gonna cut this down <clears throat> so that when I put this on, it will align with the, the, the line right there. So that's kind of what I was thinking. I would just take a couple of um, different ones of these and um, maybe figure out, I could do a little tuck spot maybe here because I like this, um, I like this look here against, especially against the background there. So I'm just gonna cut this down, kind of right on the line there of that one. And maybe we'll put this here. And instead of just leaving it square, ooh, I'm gonna grab my corner rounder and maybe add a little corner round to that so you can kind of tell it's a little tuck spot on top. I like that. And let's see, I'm, I haven't decided what I'm gonna do here yet, but I think I wanna have another pocket over here. So let's see. I like the look of that one. I actually like this one better because it has some words and things on it. So, and it's a low pocket, but I like that. So I'm gonna grab my pencil again, and I'm gonna cut this down. And now these, I'm not necessarily leaving the border like I did before. These might go right up to the edge. Since I think I might wanna add some sewing at the end, um, I am going to kind of put these up to the edge so that they can get sort of included in that <clears throat> stitching. So that one goes there. And I think that for this one, maybe I'll grab my one inch hole punch and just add a little notch to this one. And it's just gonna be small and I'm eyeballing the center, which is always dangerous for me to do because we end up not getting it in the center all the time. But that looks pretty good. And of course, I'm gonna distress all of this once um, once I you know finish picking out where I want everything. And then the last thing that I might do is add a pocket to the back. So let's see what we got here. That blues I'm not crazy about, but that, well, I'm not crazy about that either. Let's see. That blue's a little bit better. <clears throat> or I certainly could just use that. And I think I like that the best. Boy, that was easy, huh? Sometimes when you just hold things up to uh, your piece, it becomes very clear <laughs> which one you might want to have on there. I'll keep that out because I probably will need to mark this. I kind of like that this is a ledger page. And once again, I think I'm going to do this from end to end, or fairly close there. Like that. Okay. So now let's, uh, I'm going to just go ahead. I'm going to move these out of the way since I'm not using them. Put them back in the scrap bin, but I'm excited that I'm using a couple new ones, a couple, couple more scraps here. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to distress all these pockets. Um, and then we'll talk about putting them on.
Everything's all distressed and ready to go. And I'm gonna add some stitching now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, before these are put on, I'm going to stitch down the sides and possibly across the top of each one of my pockets um, because my plan is to stitch around the entire outside of this trifold. And so I don't need to sew across the bottom because when I, um, when I sew around the whole thing, all the bottoms should get caught in. So I'm just going to do the sides and the tops because if I do those, I'm going to end up um, you know, sewing through this pocket, which I don't want to do. Now, the ones that are on the outside edges, like this one, um, I'm not gonna sew the bottom and I'm not gonna sew this side because those two will both be caught up when I do the stitch around the outside. So I'm just gonna sew down this side and down this side just on the paper itself. And then for this one, because this is not on an outer edge, I am gonna sew that side across the top and down that side. So that's kind of my plan. Anything that is on an outside edge, I'm not gonna sew. So this side I'm not gonna sew, but I'm gonna go sew the top and this side because this is on an inner, an inner flap there, if that makes sense. And then this one, because both of its, whoops, both of its inner side, I'm just gonna sew down, or I'm gonna sew up the side and across the top and down this side. So then the bottom will get caught in when we do, um, when we sew everything together. Okay, so I'm just gonna take these pieces off and go ahead and sew them and then I'll show you when I get back. Okay, I have everything sewn, all my pockets sewn but not put on. Um, but now I'm just going to, to put them on so that when I sew, you know, everything's ready to go. Now I don't necessarily have to um, glue down the sides that I'm going to sew, but just so I don't forget one, because as I was sewing, I've kept forgetting sides and I'd have to go back and restitch, you know, where the sides that I know I wasn't going to be sewing on. I'm just going to, I'm just going to glue the sides that I know need to be glued down for a pocket. So this is the top of this pocket that's going to go here. So I'm going to hold it at the top and I'm just going to glue the three other sides. Now the sides that have stitching, I don't have to, or I'm sorry, that's the side that I do need to be more generous with my glue because I'm not going to be stitching it. So the sides that don't have stitching, they're just, you know, to keep the pocket in place until I do stitch. So they don't have to be quite as, you know, filled with glue there. But I wanna be sure the edges that I'm not gonna be sewing um, are nice and glued down for my pockets. Okay, so for this one, the top is my little notch there. I don't have to, I have to put a, some good glue on this side because I'm not sewing it. And then these sides, I'm just tacking. So I'm just going to put a little bead of glue just to hold it in place until we get to the stitching part. And I'm just gonna go through and do the rest of these the same way. All my pockets in this tuck spot are all glued down. And so now I'm just going to go ahead and do a just a zigzag stitch all the way around the outside. Um, and I'm probably gonna do it on this side because this is the outside um, of the journal. Um, just so it, you know, just so it kind of looks nicer around the outside. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so now you can see I made a stitch all the way around the outside. And I love the way that looks and just adds a little bit of um, texture to the whole thing. All my pockets are sewn on. 
And now I'm just gonna do some embellishing. So I decided that I would cut down that piece of paper that I had with this um, gorgeous bird on there. And I'm gonna use this kind of as a cover plate with some muslin as a background. So I just ripped it so that it's just about the same size, a little bit bigger than this. So I'm gonna use that on here. And then I'm gonna go through my ephemera holder and just pick out some other things that I want to add, you know, to some of these other spaces. So probably some labels and, you know, some other bits of ephemera that I think might be fun in here. So I'm just going to kind of, because I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, I'm just going to speed this up so that you can kind of just watch um, what I'm going to do before I finish it all off.
embellishments. And you can see I put a little book plate on the front and I made just a little removable tab tag here that you can stamp something in or write something on if you wanted to. And then I did add a bunch of my found numbers um, labels all over the place just because I love them and I think they just add a little something extra to it. And then you can see, um, so when we open it up, I have a pocket here and the envelope pocket is here. This is a nice big pocket. I have another small little pocket right here. And then when you open this up, there's a pocket here. This is a little tuck spot here, another big envelope pocket here. And then on the back, I also have another pocket here. So it's a perfect place to, I'm just gonna grab some little bits of, I have all these little bits of vintage ephemera, and now I have a great place to just kind of keep them all um, in here for the next time I'm ready to use them. So let's see if I can, I can put this, this is a little bit bigger. This could maybe go in here. I could certainly take these and this put this on um, in here and then it would hold that perfectly. So it's a wonderful little thing to take with you when you're traveling or something like that so that you can collect little bits of ephemera and bring it back and put it in your bigger ephemera holder if you wanted to do that. Thank you so much for watching today, friends. I hope you enjoyed this little video, making this little tri-fold folio here. If you did enjoy this video, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. Take care, friends. Bye-bye.